welcome to session number two for our virtual Serve Your City group. This session is going to be a little different than the last one in that I am going to give you some basic high level information, but then I'm going to give you some resources both in the Facebook group and also I will put links on our website on the uh, link to Serve Your City virtual group. I'll post some other resources there to better discover how God uniquely created you to serve. And then as part of this session, we will have our first Zoom call together. And we'll spend a little time talking about what we discovered about ourselves, but also how that can all work together as we serve our community. So to get started today, serving others and building a culture of serving begins with you and it begins with me. Each one of us is uniquely created for a specific purpose. In order to discover our serve, we first need to understand how God made us and equipped us. And we're going to take a look at five different areas. This is the shape model, if you've ever done that before. It's just a really easy way of remembering spiritual gifts, heart or passions, abilities, personality, and experience. So let's take a closer look about what each of these areas means. And again, I will be posting some resources for you to really dive into how God uniquely created you, and you can hopefully discover a little more about yourself. So the first area we're going to take a look at is spiritual gifts. God equips you with gifts to fulfill the unique purpose that he created for you to accomplish. In 1 Peter 4, 10 through 11, it says this, Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others as faithful stewards of God's grace in its various forms. If anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very words of God. If anyone serves, they should do so with the strength God provides so that in all things God may be praised through Jesus Christ. To him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. So as part of today, we'll be doing a spiritual gifts test. Now, if you've done a spiritual gift test before, um, it's up to you. If you feel confident that you know your gifts well, you can skip over this session. If you're not sure about what your spiritual gift tests are, or you feel like you took a test at one point, but you don't really see those gifts reflected in your life, I encourage you to take those gifts again. I will say as a caution, when you're taking a test, um, one thing to remember is answer the questions honestly and truthfully about yourself. There are some questions where you may be a little tempted to answer a little more heavily that you do something a lot because it's something you should be doing, like evangelizing. But at the same time, God equips us all differently. He gave us all different gifts. So there is no one gift better than the other. So make sure you're answering honestly to best discover how God gifted you. The next part we're going to talk about is our heart and our passion. So think about what are some things that touch your heart? What captures your attention? What activities are you constantly gravitating towards? Where are you already spending your time and your energy and your resources? What if nothing held you back? What would you do? This is the area I like to say, what are the things that make your heart beat a little faster? Maybe it's watching the commercials on TV of children who don't have enough to eat. And that just, it, it's sad for everybody, but maybe you weep when you see it. Maybe you're constantly gravitating toward helping out with the youth sports league. Maybe you like to spend time at a nursing home because you feel for the people who don't have family that come visit them. God gave us all different passions that line up with the gifts that we have. So take some time. There's some questions in the resources to help you discover this, but take some time to think about what really gets your blood pumping. What are you passionate about? Where, where is your heart gravitating towards? That's the second piece of this puzzle about ourselves. The third piece is our abilities. Our abilities and our talents are tools in the hands of God to fulfill his purpose. In Ephesians 2.10, it tells us this. We are God's handiwork, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. God made us all good at something. Some of us have the gift of gab. <laughs> Some of us are naturally athletic, or you're good with computers, or you take great pictures, or you can draw, or you can sing. Um, maybe you're just a good listener. You can lend an ear. God made you great at something, and he can use those abilities, especially when they're lined up with your heart and your gifts, to do great things. 
The next thing we're going to look at is our personality. I love discovering people's personalities and I've got a really fun personality test in our resources. Um, if you've done a DISC assessment before or Myers-Briggs, uh, that's great. If you know your Enneagram, that's awesome. Um, those are great ways to learn more about yourself. I just have a fun one so we can get to know each other a little better. But your personality plays a huge role in how you serve. And it goes past just being extroverted and introverted. Obviously, those two people are going to work in different ways, but can definitely work together and support one another. Um, but different elements of your personality are going to drive not only how you serve, but how you best serve on a team. And the last thing we're going to look at in this session is our experiences. Everything that has happened in our life can mean something when it's in the hands of God. Whether they are pleasant memories or painful memories, God can use them to make a difference. He can turn your pain into purpose. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in your weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weakness, so that Christ's power may rest in me. There are things in our life that have happened that were really hard for us. But if you're watching this video, you've made it through. And maybe you had somebody that walked alongside you and helped you through it. Maybe you just spent a lot of time wrestling with God over it. Whatever that situation was, God won't waste that. At the same time, we've all had good experiences in our life. And God can use those experiences too. He can use all of our experience to work in someone else and help us connect with someone else to point them to Jesus. There's a book called Raising World Changers in a Changing World. And the author is remembering a time that her family was serving in Kenya. And she overheard a conversation between her 14-year-old daughter and a young woman who was Kenyan, who was a teen mom. They didn't know her exact age because she grew up in terrible conditions. And they didn't even know her birthday. But uh, the author assumed that she was close in age to her daughter. So Veronica, the young mom from Kenya, asked Madison, the 14-year-old daughter, why do you think I was born here in Kenya and you were born in America? That's a loaded question and one that some 14-year-olds may run away from. That's one a lot of adults would run away from. But Madison's answer was so incredibly powerful. And she answered this, maybe I was born in America and you were born in Kenya because I'm supposed to help you. So the author drew this conclusion after thinking about this conversation. Where you live is not an accident. It's not the luck of the draw. There's a reason you are where you are. Someone in your world, at your job, in your neighborhood, or on your path needs to know that you are where you are because you can help them where they are. In this story, the topic is geographical location, but the same can be said about how God wired us. Our gifts, our passions, our experience, our abilities, none of it is wasted and it's not by chance. Even the hard parts God can use to help someone else and point them to God. So we're going to spend some time before we jump on a Zoom chat together and just discover ourselves, go through our gifts, think about our passions, um, what our heart reflects, think about our abilities and the things that we're good at and things we like to do. Think about your personality and the experiences, the good and the hard ones. And then we are going to come together and look at how God wired us individually and talk a little bit about how that all works together. So jump onto the Facebook group, be on the lookout for our Zoom chat, and I can't wait to hear what you guys discovered.